Content warning. This series will discuss topics that may bring up painful experiences for you. Please take the time to surround yourself with good medicines. If need be, pause the playback and go for a walk, stretch, have a glass of water, and come back to the show when you feel comfortable. Welcome to the Métis Speaker Series. I'm your host, Darian Kovacs. On this podcast series, we will be exploring learning, healing, and rebuilding within the Métis community. Our goal is to create awareness of and generate discussion about Métis issues, as well as how to heal from and move forward in a healthy way. We hope to reduce Métis invisibility in BC through the personal stories from our Métis community members. This show is brought to you by Métis Nation BC and Jelly Marketing. Charlie, appreciate you being here. Um, as we get started, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, kind of your experience in the Métis community. Um, well, I am Charlie Kerr. I am uh, a musician, an actor, a writer, um, and uh, my mom is um, Métis, and um, she always taught us to be really proud of it, me and my brother. And um, yeah, since I can remember, it's, it's just very, very tied to everything I ever did or, or, or thought about. Um, and um, specifically, I remember being a kid and, um, you know, knowing I wanted to be in entertainment and noticing that um, if there was a school assembly or even just watching TV, it, it was never, it was never an Indigenous person. It was never a Métis person uh for uh, for me to look up to, and I don't know exactly how I formulated it, but I was kind of like, I'd like to be that. I'd like to um, yeah, that yeah, that, that's I, I have distinct memories of being um, being a kid and 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 thinking to myself um, how cool that would be. That, that is incredible. And, and tell us about where you grew up and uh, where you're living now. Oh, man. That's, yeah, I mean, it's a little complicated. Um, I grew up in Vancouver with my dad yeah. and then partially in Hawaii with yeah. my mom, which is a long story. Um <laughs> But, uh, but a true story. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and residing and then in Vancouver now, up in, yeah. and then now I'm, um, uh, at times I've been a bit of a nomad just because of the job and, and touring and winding up different places or, or shooting something and whatever, uh, city, but, uh, COVID really, um, uh, planted me, um, yeah. in, in Vancouver where, um, I'm lucky enough to live. Yeah. So, Charlie, um, I'm going to use the term playwright because I just love that. It was in one of your bios. But uh, yep. if you had to pick one of the three, and I know it's very hard for a Renaissance person. It's like asking Leonardo da Vinci, are you an inventor, a sculptor, or an artist? But of the three, what do you, what maybe if you could pick just one, playwright, musician, actor, or thespian, which of the three kind of, if you could only pick I one? I mean... <laughs> My cop out answer is yeah. um, that they're all more or less identical and uh, in kind when of. When you're on stage, uh, you're at that. You're yeah. acting on stage. You're writing on stage music. Okay, okay, I got it. That's a good cop out answer. <laughs> and uh, kind of in indigenous tradition, it's all yeah. storytelling. Yeah. Um, and um, I think that that's kind of 
what I think about it in in my heart of hearts. Um, that um, essentially, like, yeah, every time I go on stage, it's it's very similar to doing a play in the sense that I have the same script, which is the yeah. lyrics of the same songs, and yeah. like like a play, it changes slightly every night depending yeah. on what everybody is feeling in the room. So um, so I think those two things are very similar. Um, and then writing, you know, whether I'm writing a, a script for a film or I'm writing lyrics for a song, it's, it's really just the, the slightest tweaks um, yeah. to... Uh, uh, to um, to to get it where it needs to go in kind of both mediums, um, yeah, and and honestly, like, I get that question a decent amount. Like, obviously, okay, um, just uh, yeah, it's pretty weird and ambitious to to be as like, um uh to, to to kind of not be uh entirely um a specialist yeah but my two kind of uh things that i i like to to kind of talk about with it is um donald glover mm-hmm. kind oh, of yeah. really yeah um made me kind of because uh, people would ask me that a lot in 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 very like aggressive ways at times um and, and his background was a writer before he acted on community so that's yeah yeah and and then you know and then decide to also be you know one of my favorite musicians yeah. and and you know have a lot of intelligent things to say about yeah. where the um where the world uh, was going, and yeah. I think I think this is America is my favorite music yeah. video of all time. I'm yeah. I'm incredibly inspired yeah. by him and his um, ability to try it all. Yeah. And I think the other thing is, um, I think because I sucked at everything for so long, like nothing really comes naturally to me. Um, I don't really have a problem sucking at things yeah um like that's gonna sound like a bit of a contradiction considering how much like perfectionism lives in me yeah but there's a part of my brain that um i can activate that's really um gorgeous sometimes where um you know if somebody's really like tearing apart something i made as a writer um I can, I can think to myself, oh, not even a writer, like, that's fine, like, (laughs) you know, like, I, you know, I do, I'm I'm a musician and an actor, and then, um, and it's funny if those things kind of tank, I can kind of start saying to myself, well, you know, at the end of the day, you know, writing's the thing that maybe I'm good at. (laughs) Yeah, 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 Yeah. I don't know, like, that's very, very, uh, very very master of none but i but i'm so i'm just so passionate um about all of it and i get in rooms of people who are really really good at all those things and yeah um i'm just incredibly inspired so um yeah i yeah i really don't mind being the least talented person uh in in every in 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 most rooms well i'm going to um uh disagree with with 4.3 million (laughs) other people who have listened to southern comforting uh hotel mira which is the band that you're a lead singer in um i want to play one of your songs uh i'm gonna play it off my phone here we may uh edit it out and just actually get the true recording here but i want to play uh speaking off the record again just on spotify alone this doesn't include Apple, doesn't include record listens or CD listens and tape cassette listens and all the other ways, radio listens. 
1.7 million people have listened to this song. I want to just play a small portion of it. And Charlie, I'd love your, your thoughts and, and tell us a bit about this song. Sounds great. 15 of my closest friends Walked me right up to the ledge Everyone loves you, they said So why do they leave me for dead? Charlie, tell us uh, tell us about that song and what that what that means to you. Um, essentially, it's it's really tied to the title. The title is uh, speaking off the record, and essentially, I was writing a song that was all of my thoughts that I thought I would never. Um, publicize, uh, speak, let alone sing. Um, because so much of it was like tied to this uh, childhood trauma or just in things I found embarrassing or shameful about myself. And, um, and I kind of put together um, that... Uh, I was drawn to entertainment and um, and I guess on some level being special um, <sighs> kind of with this idea that um, it would make all the pain um, and the, and the tragedy kind of go away if, if I reached a certain um, uh, point uh, or, or number or, or what have you. Um, and, and the song kind of tries to uh, dispel that and, and kind of tell some uncomfortable truths and um and uh there's a lot of things that to me were so specific to um my life that that, that were really tied to um uh shame and and I was really really quite afraid of releasing the song in terms of what people might say and it, even like in certain instances, like the specific people I'm singing about who had maybe wronged me or, or traumatized me in certain ways, um, I had a weird paranoia that they were going to um, find the song uh, and, and that nobody was going to listen to the song or connect to it. Mm-hmm. But the people who I was singing about negatively were going to find it. Um, and then, um, and then kind of with me or, uh, gaslight me if that's not how it went down. Um, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're feeling sorry for yourself or, um, kind of all the, um, horrible, uh, internal monologues yep. um I, i've i've kind of had um through uh various uh bouts with uh with uh mental illness essentially yeah. um so it was terrifying mm. it was terrifying to release and i remember at the time um at the time i was i was um seeing somebody who uh i was just 
over the moon with her. I just was counting my lucky stars. She was best, the best. Yeah. And um, I think on some level that kind of gave me this weird like bravery of, of being able to release that song because I, I thought on one level or another, even if this tanks, um, uh, it's important to me to to make these statements and um i know that there's someone who um um cares about me mm-hmm. and um loves me no matter what and it's it's really not about the 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 music i make or, or what have you it was, it was about a um a really deep uh connection that we had mm-hmm. It's amazing. So, um, with that one, sometimes I, I like to just credit um, uh, her with making me feel uh, good enough about myself that that I was able to take that big risk. So it, there's there's a lot, you know, to use a, a phrase of the kids. There's a lot to unpack yeah. with that song, yeah, yeah. but um, to spin it positively because that's what was going on um at the time and then um me and that person uh did break up um in in like a um in a way that you know uh kind of um i don't think that there's like any resentment either way i think we still have uh love for each other in, in lots of ways um but then then the song was you know gonna come out and I just didn't think anybody would relate to it or like it because it was so specific to my experience and and so much of my life has been really clouded with this idea of like you know my uh my pain uh, doesn't count. Um, I'm feeling sorry for myself. Um, it's not that bad. Um, so it was really this, um, it's been this incredibly (sighs) humbling and, and beautiful experience that that song ended up being, um, our fastest, growing and most popular song and even musically it doesn't have much of a chorus it doesn't have um the kind of um benchmarks of what what you'd think of a hit song so i'm really i'm really proud of it in about a gajillion different ways um and it's such a it's such an important um uh uh, kind of time capsule yeah. for such an uh, confusing yeah. time yeah. of my life. So, question about um, being Métis and, and the influence of the Métis mm-hmm. music. Uh, do we see much fiddle influence or fiddles uh, music pl- appearing in your uh, your albums? Uh, no, um, not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't exper- uh, experimented with that yet, um, but you know, um, uh, but my mom was telling me that uh, that uh, her father, uh, Buster, um, would uh, would break into uh, a jig yeah. really, really yeah. often, and I think it might have been the same jig that I was taught at a uh, at a Métis Nation of. Uh, Alberta uh, conference that I, that I got to be the keynote speaker of not long ago. Um, so that was a cool moment in terms of like how that works. Sometimes I just see like, I just see the echoes of like um, what what's important to me and, and how I operate and, and how kind of um, tied 
to uh, the ancestry that it is. I, I, I think about um, this feeling of um, not belonging or, or being from multiple worlds. And I felt really, really al alone and alien in that. And then I went to uh, the conference uh, for the first time to speak through my friend, uh, Jeff Mayhew, who's also Métis, who recommended me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and being in a room of whatever, 350, 700 people who all have that same experience was really, really powerful for me, man, yeah. being, being alone together. Yeah. Um, uh, and then kind of zeroing in on how historic that um, that is, in particular for the Métis people not even being recognized um, as, as either yeah. white or uh, white or indigenous. Um, and yeah, kind of getting the, like, you know, short, drawing the short straw with both and, and um, and yeah, and a, a history of um, yeah, there, there was there was you know brutally uh, fought for, um, and um, and some of the stuff I've, I've gone through in my life has been you know capital T tragic yeah. um, and not fair and not cool. Um, <laughs> I sound like a surfer, but, um, but, uh, but in particular, I sometimes pretty much credit, um, my resilience and, and persistence, um, with the, with the blood that, uh, flows through my veins and the, um, and the legacy, yeah. um, that's incredible. And That's and I think like and um quite honestly at this point my spirituality uh is more is more tied to that than I think anything. I, I um I think a lot about um what 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 my ancestors would think. Yeah. Incredible. So you working in the entertainment industry, uh, acting, writing, uh, music, you know, what does it look like around a kind of Métis visibility uh, in an industry that typically uh, Métis, people, Métis people have been largely invisible? Uh, um, I'm always, you know, uh, pretty, uh, I've said this before, I'm always terrified mm -hmm. um, that I'm somehow the like uh gonna accidentally step on toes and 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 seem like the uh the the rachel dole is all of any movement i'm a part of um, and, and, uh, and those that don't so know who she I, is you know, maybe explain who rachel is for her. um rachel dole is all um pretended uh to be is a white woman who uh it, it's more complicated than this uh but it's a white woman who pretended to uh be black and had a uh job i believe with the naacp um in a high-ranking uh uh gig and um kind of was uh benefiting from uh this uh culture and um teachings that she had nothing to do with yeah. and um yeah just kind of kind of the ultimate culture vulture um mm -hmm. uh kind of uh um i think the like kind of um the kind of colloquial phrase we have for is pretendian yeah, yeah. uh yeah um, so, um, so all that to say is that, um, you know, there's, there's, um, 
I rather than my experience as as somebody pretty um, uh, white passing, uh, I think it's just important to note how um, how few opportunities um, there are mm-hmm. for uh, for indigenous people in uh, in film and TV, and mm-hmm. and how even when they do get to exist, they rarely get to be um, the, uh, the tellers of their own stories. And, and that's where, that's where the really, um, amazing stuff, the amazing, unique, rich storytelling comes from is, uh, when, uh, when it's as authentic as possible. Yeah. Have Um, you seen uh, Rutherford Falls yet? No. So it's a uh, yeah, written by uh, you know, indigenous people. It's out of the U.S. So it stars, if you remember, Andy from The Office, that actor. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ed Helms. Yeah, Ed Helms. He stars in it. And, uh, and it's all about him being kind of a, a sixth, seventh generation character of the, you know, the mayor of the founding of this community and then the First Nations people who live there and their relationship and, and the indigenous people's uh, relationship, they own the casino in town and the business savviness of them and what does that look like and what does that mean for, you know, uh, corporations that want to come in. And so, but it was only, it was all written by indigenous people, which is pretty cool. But again, much like uh, TV, even in Canada, you don't often hear, it's typically First Nations and, and sometimes Inuit, but I've yet to see ever a, a mainstream sitcom ever have Métis people in it. I've yet to, maybe you've seen I mean, one. I've, so. Well, I, I, I almost starred in one. Uh, As, and really were you cool. a Métis? And you, uh, no. and you played a Métis person in the show. Oh, what? Uh, I was the second choice uh, after a long process of auditioning to, um, to play a character who was um, Métis and um, uh, felt detached from his culture. Um, and it was... It was Listen, when that when that script came across my desk when I was recommended for oh. that, I was like, "Here we wow. go. This is gonna is, be." Is rad. it in production now? So, or where is it at? Let's see. Yeah, it's a show called Sky okay. Med, and the character is called uh, Bodhi. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, Cree Métis, um, like me, wow. um, and uh, yeah. So uh, and and that story is, uh, you know. Uh, is written um, in part uh, by by indigenous yeah. people, I believe, and um, I wish them all the best with yeah, that production. I was, I was very yeah. flattered to be yeah. considered. Um, but up until that moment, yeah, things yeah. zero and, things. And let's hope it's that, not only in production, um, but then gets put up. Maybe, maybe worst case, APTN picks it up. Oh no, it's it's uh, it's Paramount oh, nice. plus with. In in correlation with oh, CBC, that's I believe. Incredible! It's incredible. Yeah, it's called. So it's called SkyMed. It's kind of like Top Gun meets ER. Wow. That is incredible. And uh, yeah, um, but uh, but it's funny. Um, yeah, like I've you know um, there is an entire network, uh, uh, television network that I have, um, never gotten to, uh, uh, audition for. Um, and you know, my more all American actor friends, um, uh, you know, have made living with this, with this network and, and, and the, you know, there's blatant, uh, white supremacy in 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 the film and uh, and TV world, um, and it needs to be yeah. called out at every uh, yeah. turn. Yeah. Um, and then you know, um, uh, I've my, uh, to, I've never. Of all the characters I've played, none of them have had brothers and sisters on screen or um, 
or a mom and dad. And I, I think that's interesting sometimes to be like, huh, so um, th- that that kind of the, the phrase in the industry is like ethnically ambiguous. But um, but yeah, I've always thought that was like a weird thing in, in casting that you can kind of miss out on um, because, you know, um, often casting comes down to uh we cast the rest of the family mm. we need you know we need to now now we're casting yeah. the son the mom and dad are cast and and if they're both white i'm out yeah. of the picture you know and then you look at my filmography um you know if i had you know um let's not yeah for the most you were part, a vampire though uh, in uh supernaturals let's not forget about that <laughs> yeah that vampire was, number yeah. one um, let's not forget about that often filmed in fort langley good old supernaturals i had a name i have a name and i think i'm Stu. Oh, Stu. yeah oh, that's but cool. um but then i was credited as vampire one which yeah. is always cool uh but um <laughs> but a recurring um, role in jan it was tv series as nate amazing um both those experiences were um yeah. really cool uh supernatural was like an interesting thing because i'd been auditioning yeah. for that show for yeah. years and years and years and um and uh there was like a part that i almost got on that show in the final season that um would have been uh really significant and then it, it didn't go to me at the last minute. And then they were kind of like, we have seven more episodes to cast. We're going to try and get you yeah. something. And, uh, and that's kind of where the, the, the Southern vampire oh. role came so from. So I need to ask what you got, you got a thank and, you credit on the, uh, from the open house, a special thanks for that. Yeah. Um, well, uh, um, Angel and Suzanne are uh, okay. friends of mine. And they're the uh, they're the directing writing duo um, behind that and uh, and Hypnotic, uh, which is their um, uh, more recent okay. film uh, that did really really well on Netflix. Um, and uh, I I I donated to uh, I I donated money to their okay. Kickstarter or something. Oh, I believe that's awesome. Very cool. So. So being yeah. in Vancouver and kind of like down, to, like kind of in a kind of urban area, do you still feel a connection to your Métis community, or what does that look like now as kind of like a young adult Métis person, and how do you stay uh, connected to the the culture and the community? It's a good question. Um, and, may, and maybe it's very difficult at this stage of life, and maybe it's more, uh, maybe it looks like maybe the Métis needs to well, create a charter community in downtown Vancouver. That'd be kind of a neat Ur- yeah, urban core I mean, Métis. We've got the, we've got, we've got the, uh, we got the Métis Nation of uh, BC yeah. out here, which is cool to yeah. check in with and, you know, having. A beautiful headquarters um, right in Surrey, uh, right off the SkyTrain, easy to get yeah. to. Yeah. And uh, my 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 Métis friends, um, uh, I'm, you know, uh, in in contact with, and and um, and you know, I just I it's just something you can't like the specifics of kind of the 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 culture and the the language and and the um and the things of that nature yeah. oftentimes i feel detached okay. uh um and and i'm i'm happy uh anytime um i'm embraced by those communities and and i get to do um anything to um participate or 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 
or uh, or boost or perform or, or whatever um, with them. But um, yeah, like in in a in a more unfortunate and cynical sense, mm-hmm. I think it's impossible to. Um, forget that you're indigenous while the world continues their ongoing genocide um you know me and my brother um live in the same building and um had to read about these kids and in these residential schools and and um that's yeah, it's just in and um yeah you just feel that pull um and that significance and and like i said you're just you're just reminded um and um yeah i don't know i'm the you know mm-hmm. when you think about um how how um um i'm trying to find a word that's more eloquent uh but i'm not going to be able to like i can't think of um a more uh you know um over kind of uh people and 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 circumstance um so I, I don't know, I just, I often, I can't not think um, about the complete lack of equality um, mm-hmm. when it comes to um, Indigenous people. Yeah. So yeah. Un- unfortunately, sometimes that's, that's what... Uh, that's the um, lens I, I'm I'm seeing it through more in just the more um, uh, modern you what's going on right now yeah. um, uh, for these people and 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 you know and how my uh, and how my privilege needs to be leveled at absolutely every turn mm-hmm. um, to help. Yeah. Um, Cause along with these being my people, mm-hmm. um, it's also just absurdly um, I don't understand how people can't, see the blatant um tragedy and mistreatment yeah thank you for sharing charlie um i'm gonna play a bit of southern comforting i hope that makes sense it makes um, so much sense no it, okay. it's, it's the, there are not words okay. no there's no better words to put to okay. something so devastating so um i'm gonna play a, a song here i don't and i want you to tell us a bit about this after Charlie, tell us about that song, Southern Comforting, uh, 4.3 million listens on Spotify alone. 
Um, kind of, kind of a sleeper, sleeper hit. Um, came out in twenty fourteen. Didn't, uh, didn't get a lot of. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I wrote it long before that. I I wrote it like. Um, it was it was a song I wrote as a teenager. Um, uh, there's there's this video I found of it, kind of in my Facebook memories of of me playing it on the acoustic guitar, and um, yeah, and I'm I'm with that song. Um, like, I really want to, uh, from where I sit today, I really want to, like, celebrate how, um, how much I was putting, um, myself out there. Yeah. And, um, and, um, trying to tell this story and and you know being being really um young and and still able to um write something that that the people like to this day and 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 can parse you know meaning from in their lives like there's something clearly um universal about what i was getting at uh (laughs) which again is like this like total cosmic punchline because it was so personal to what I was going through. Um, um, yeah, I, I mean, I love the lines about, um, um, uh, the liquor habit fills the liquor cabinet, but we still blame our folks and those hips their goddamn catchphrases oh i don't get the joke when they say southern comforts comforting isn't it um when your feelings aren't feeling magnificent um and uh yeah i don't know like i i grew up around a lot of addiction um so i think that that's what that song is about more than anything is just like the way alcohol plays this major, major role in kind of um, everybody's lives Mm -hmm. um, and how, uh, and yeah, just kind of, um, you know, as a numbing agent Mm -hmm. or as a thing that, you know, makes you more social or uh or whatever it is um i think looking back i think that's i guess what i was getting at um but uh to be entirely open and honest like i i can't really remember um um because most of my life I felt like up until very recently, maybe the last couple of years, but most of my life I, I kind of felt like I was just like um, a pinball being bounced from place to pay, place to place. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of, um, a lot of um, uh, mental illness and a lot of kind of um, uh blacked out experiences um um but uh so so yeah like i said with that said like um my best guess of what i was getting at mostly was um i was dating um a girl named megan uh at the time um whom i uh thought the world of and I, I really really enjoyed what we had together and um and um yeah i was very intimidated by her cool friends and um 
and I was just thinking about how uh, alcohol um, uh, was such a large character in my life. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Charlie. Um, favorite Jan Arden song? I, um, uh, insensitive. Beautiful. Charlie, really, really appreciate you being on the show today. How can people find you and, and follow you and, and find your music? Uh, at Hotel Mira on TikTok. Um, at Hotel Mira Music on Instagram and Twitter. Um, if you want to see what um, I'm up to kind of outside of the band setting, uh, my Instagram is at Charlie Kerr for real. F O R R E A L. Yeah. This is awesome. I think that's like, um, yeah, our latest album is called Perfectionism. Um, yeah, I mean, you could stream the Jan show. Yeah. I show up in the third season. Nice. nice. Along, with, um, along with Michael Bublé in one episode. You put him in a headlock at one point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is great. No, no duet came out of that though. No, uh, is, no hotel Mira, Michael Bublé. Jen. You know, he wanted to be treated as an yeah, actor. Yeah. And, you got you you to respect that. As, you can respect that. And as precisely yeah, yeah. as a musician actor, yeah. I kind of just, yeah. we kind of vibed in Good. a way of where I was kind of yeah. really made sure to just, yeah. Um, you know, oh, like, you know, yeah. it was like, just treat him yeah. like anybody else who got to set. Yeah. Um, That's great. I think he dug that Good. and yeah, That's... That, that, that was, that was kind of my experience with him. That's awesome. It, but yeah, sweet dude. And those, um, and those who are in Vancouver yeah. listening to the show on occasion, if you end up walking under say the Camby street bridge, you might have the pleasure of hearing Charlie Kerr play a set, uh, for such groups as, uh, the BC Greens. So uh, you, you might just see some pop-up concerts once in a while by Charlie. So it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Like I said, you know, um, all of my nonsense aside, I'm always just want to bring it back to doing what I can to um, uh, with what I have and, and the tools I have to. Um, uh, make make the world uh, a better and more livable place for for those who um, um, weren't weren't born into uh, the same kind of privilege as I was. Yeah, I mean, it, it just excited me um, that uh, there were. Um, Uh, a party that um, uh, was we're going to do everything they could not just to be the same major letdown to indigenous people that almost every uh, um, politician has been in the past and that's kind of that's what I said yeah. to to Sonia when I met her. You know, I was like, you know, what what are, what are you going to uh, what are you gonna do? Like, you know, and um, yeah, so that's awesome. That's kind of that's a big reason that uh, I was I was wanting to do that. Um, and um, and climate change is is very real. Um, and um, it would be it'd be cool to have uh, representatives that aren't um, entirely more motivated by um, yeah corporate interest. Well, Charlie, I appreciate you being here and joining us, um, and and yeah, being such a great voice advocate, Northern Star, uh, and I think for many, probably you know boys and girls who are Métis and look up and see you acting, musician, playwright, they can look up to that and say, I can see a Métis person 
in that role, I could be there too one day. So uh, it, it's pretty cool what you've been able to do for uh, this next generation. It means a lot. Thank you, Charlie. Um, thanks a lot. Um, I, I interrupted. You were saying something. Oh, I was going to say, what song do you want us to play going out? What's your favorite Hotel Mira song that you want us to kind of, kind of your walkout song? Um, I think this could be it for me. Yeah. Uh, might be a good one to, uh, to go out on. That's a, that's a kind of, um, uh, kind of anthem for, um, uh, uh, for, for people who feel, um, reliably kind of, uh, alone in the world and, and, uh, and disturbed by, uh, by what goes on. Okay, here we go. This is, this could be it for me. Hotel Mira. We were, uh, chatting with Charlie Kerr, lead singer. Charlie, that was awesome, man. This has been the Métis Speaker Series podcast. I'm Darian Kovacs. Thanks to Métis Nation BC for making this possible with funding provided by the Civil Forfeiture Office's Indigenous Healing Stream. You can listen to all of our episodes, learn more about the podcast, and sign up to the Métis Nation of BC newsletter to stay up to date on Métis News at Métis Podcast Series. Ca. You can find out more about the music we're playing by Love Life by visiting SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash official L-U-V-L-Y-F official and link in the show notes for your convenience. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast listening device. See you again soon. Mina Kawapa Mitten. Thank you. Marcy for listening. <laughs>